Hello, my name is Malak, but my family calls me Mickey. Yes, like Mickey Mouse. I have never quite understood why they call me Mickey, but I just got used to it. When I was in Amman, Jordan, I learned how to read and write in English. The main language is Arabic, although my mom wanted me to be fluent in English, since she believed it would be a very useful asset in life. For those who do not know, Amman is actually the capital of Jordan. And it is it has the pillars of the Roman Temple of Hercules and the 8th century Ahmad Palace complex, known for its grand dome. Furthermore, being enrolled in a private school from the age of five brought more opportunities for growth and development. For instance, I was introduced to a variety of books I would not have been introduced to if I had gone to a public school. As a child, I remember being able to read proficiently while other kids struggled. I always viewed reading as an important asset in life due to the fact that my mom gave me the mindset, while other, co while other kids saw it as a game, per se. I saw my friends on the verge of crying because their parents were asking them to read and they had such small amount of knowledge of pronunciation of words. I honestly feel like reading has given me a different view of life, not only when dealing with literacy, but since I come from a place in which reading is not prioritized, it helps me appreciate everything much more. Growing up, I was passionate about reading, that I would not like to travel anywhere outside my house without a book in my sight. I remember when I was 10 years old, I had gotten into an argument with my mother over such a simple topic. As a child, arguing with my mother brought such pain to my heart, and eventually I would burst out into tears. Although, as soon as she sent me to my room, I immediately grasped a book and started to read. I might not tell you the exact moment in which my mind went blank due to the fact that I was so focused on the book. But I can say with such certainty that the amount of joy I had when reading the book, I forgot all about the sorrowness in which I was feeling at that moment. The analogy I am about to use as an example might sound a little far-fetched, but at the moment, this is how I felt. The feeling was like when a mother gives birth to a child, the mother is in pain when giving birth, but once she has sight of her child and grabs the hand of the born child, the amount of joy overcomes the anguish in which she went through. This is how I felt. When I started to read, you may be asking yourself, well, sheesh, what book was she reading? The book I was reading was about a slavery written by Frederick Douglass, named Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave. It was a small book, but as a child, the book was enormous. I finished reading the entire book the night I had gotten in an argument with my mother. And once I finished, I never felt such gratitude and accomplishment in my life. It is a memory I can never forget. As I matured, sadly, sadly to say, my reading has not matured with me as I hoped it would. What? While I was used to reading up to seven books a month, now I rarely read a book a month. My reading habits have declined, not because of the mediocre reason of not being able to have time, because I feel that teenagers have an abundance of time on their hands to read, but the environment around us has made us feel like addicts to our phones. Studies have shown that 59% of teenagers feel addicted to their phone. I was never a fan of reading books that were not based on real events or books based on facts. Reading for me is to feed my mind and soul, so what is the point of reading something about dragons? Over the years, I have read books about dragons and sci-fi, and I didn't enjoy it whatsoever. It has become somewhat hard for me to read because I'm so picky. I would hope that over time I am able to change that because there is so much more to reading than to just learn. Learning is just not words written on a book, it is a universe of its own kind. Thanks to my teacher for allowing us to read in class, I have been able to read a very formative book about human rights in, in the many different countries called Human Rights by Douglas Phillips. It is a nonfiction book that mainly focuses on the history of the human rights movement. Douglas does not give much of his opinion because he wants the reader to develop his or her own opinion about our rights. And that to me is very respected because in many nonfiction books, I have read, the author seems to always give his or her opinion, but Douglas wants us to think outside the box. Even though he does not give his opinion, it seems that he is very hopeful for our future, because he always gives the positive outcome of things instead of dwelling on the negative parts of human rights.
The characters in his book are based on real people who do not have the basic human rights that many people have. As I have done my research on Mr. Douglas, I have found that he is an American man who wanted to enlighten others on human rights in countries other than America, and that made me really enjoy the book even more because it is a foreign man who sees a problem and feels the need to address it. The book begins with the defining human rights, which is a right that is believed to belong justifiable to every person. Then it talks about how other countries are doing human wrongs. It educates the reader on how many third world countries are not informed about their rights as individuals. As I read, I found that Mr. Douglas finds growth in the world. He also talks about how the 30 years ago, many were not educated, but people are now opening their eyes. The entirety of the book was extremely fascinating and raw. My favorite excerpt from the book is from paragraph two, page 10. It shows the most critical part of the book. Even that the book does not necessarily have important characters, except for the people who died due to not having human rights. The first few pages talk about the purpose and human rights and why it is important. Throughout the book, it exhibits how the how having human rights have affected humans as individuals. History has shown that if there is no rights or say there is corruption. As I finished the book, I realized I had missed out on so much. I would not want my children to be able to learn. I have learned at an older age because they have not read as much as they should have. At the end of the day, there is no st statistic or source that says reading is not good for you. And I will be sure to let my children know that.